uh, their lives no longer, it, it, they cannot be the same again. And so we are about touching lives, touching hearts. And if some people's minds and hearts and lives are touched and they become Muslims, the benefit is theirs uh, and, and also ours. Uh, we see the residual, residual from God. You know, when somebody enters Islam, it's like salesmen, we get our percentage. Yes. It's a residual that will be on our scales on a day of judgment. Uh, for them, they are the greatest winners because they've been relieved of their sins. And now they have become Muslims. And now they can make something better of their, uh, they can see their purpose in life and they can do something better with their lives. We talked about now the purpose of life and the importance of bringing people to, to, to consider this. And so many people that when, when they listen to your lectures and they consider this, they accept this wonderful way of life. But now let's talk about the invitation. The invitation is crucial and many Muslims who are living Islam, they're, they're not sharing this invitation. Can you talk about in Arabic is called Dawah, mm. the importance of sharing this message, this message that brings peace to a person's life, that brings happiness and success, the importance of sharing the purpose of life with humanity. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very natural uh, uh, when you think about it, and I like to use the analogy uh, because analogies sometimes get points across quicker than doctrine. Um, you know, out of uh, some 180 transnational companies in the world today, about 120 are American companies. Now, that needs to be explained, put into context. Uh, this is because Americans uh, have no problem in promoting their goods and services. Uh, they believe that their goods and services are the best. And they go everywhere in the world and say, I'm an American. And their goods and services are embraced by people all over the world. If a Muslim believes that their faith system and their values is the best that the world has to offer, why wouldn't they share that with another human being? And if they're not doing that, then there's probably some psychological or personal um, um, deficits that they have. Uh, maybe they have a, a, a conflict in their uh, uh, self-esteem. Maybe they're socially dysfunctional. Maybe they're afraid. And all of those uh, uh, psychological, uh, um, um, we can call it um, uh, psychological barriers, uh, prevent us from delivering this message. And our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, his main mandate from God was to deliver the message. He was the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, if Muslims are Muslims by culture, or they're Muslims uh, by just um, uh, by birth, if they're Muslims just uh, by virtue of uh, saying the words and being Muslim and by performing the prayers and so forth, who cares about that? Nobody knows what we do inside the masjid. Nobody knows what we do inside our homes. What people understand is the behavior. What people understand is the character. What people understand is the residual, the final product. And if people are proud about the products and services that they represent, they speak to the world about it. And so when we give dawah, the invitation to Islam, we're not inviting people to ourselves. We're not inviting people to Muslims. We're inviting people to Islam, submission to the one God. We're inviting people to a premise of life that will give them benefit in this life and also in the hereafter. So why wouldn't people do that? And if they don't do that, well, they are the losers. Uh, and then uh, those of us who have adopted that mode uh, uh, of responsibility, and that's what it is. It's a social responsibility that we have to what deliver the message. Because if we don't deliver the message, then we're like an ambassador that was sent out from the king. And we arrived in a place to deliver a message on behalf of the king. And we got so engrossed with the society uh, that we were sent to, we forgot to deliver the message. So we Muslims have been sent by the king of the heavens and the earth and we are ambassadors to deliver this message, and we cannot forget uh, our mission statement. Before we go to break, just if you can help clarify, you, you mentioned something about the, the, the person's mind becomes a little clouded, but why is it when we talk about sports, when we talk about football, baseball, when we talk about the opposite gender and dating and you know, Facebook and all these other things that are out there, pe people, you know, you can carry on a conversation, but sometimes, usually, like this indi individual at Home Depot, real life example, you bring up this crucial question and the person's mind becomes clouded. Why do you think this is? Uh, well, it's, an, it's a natural, natural um, psychological knee-jerk, we call it. Knee-jerk? Yes, knee-jerk. It's like, um, I don't know if you took psycho psychology 101 and the whole um, an analogy of Pavlov's, Pavlov's uh, salivating dog, um, that when you think about food, you start salivating. When you look at the golden arches of, uh, of McDonald's, you start to salivate. So this is something natural, inherent in the human being. And so people, uh, when they talk about sports or girls talking about boys and boys about girls, and 
or whatever it is that people feel motivated about and whatever, they have a natural uh, ability to communicate uh, and, t and talk about my team, okay, and to talk about it real enthusiastically. But when it comes to the issue of their faith-based principles, if they're not clear about that, they don't salivate, they're not motivated, and therefore they start talking about it in a very clinical way. They become reactionary. So, you know, we need to do this in a very natural way, just like fish swim and birds fly. And, uh, uh, and if we do that, people will receive it in the same way and Allah knows best. We're going to take another break. Sure. We'll be right back with more. We're here with Sheikh Khaled Yassin on the Dean Show. Sit tight. We'll be right back. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Come and see what everyone's talking about. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. But the argument here is that God, out of His love... Because in all honesty, if you really wanted to do something, you're going to find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. There are a few problems here. Why were people of generations and generations and generations being told to worship one God, ask that God for forgiveness, ask Him for, for salvation,